Okay, so we've already covered uh, Trichina and Villamax, right? Because I know um, there's some something missing for the uh, case study I'm doing now. And um, we'll see, since I already got uh, Trichina and Deviat uh, case studies complete for my Power Rangers Lost Galaxy fan film. And that's the film's title, because I print that out to make it look, you know, gritty looking. Um... You know who I was expecting to uh, show off next? One of their partners that uh, Trakina met back, back on uh, Planet Onyx. Villamax and his partner in the walking barrel, Kegler. Now you got all now you got the four the the four, you know, evil duo gang. But today I'm reviewing Villamax and possibly Kegler because there's nothing much for uh, for me to talk about them. And knowing that I made the uh, the uh, puppets by myself, I, I, I thought about the way how they would look in a paper puppet form. Because, you know, when, I, well, when the Power Rangers Lost Galaxy toys were out, the only villains from the series that had um, action figures were obviously, you know, Captain Mutiny and Barbara X. But in the toy packaging by Bandai, Captain Mutiny's toy was Space Buccaneer, while Barbara X's uh, toy packaging called him Space Android. That's not really a good way to call him. You shouldn't have called him by what what his name is on the on the show rather than something that you should call him for the toy. But even though Captain Mutiny and Barbara X were introduced into the series late. Anyway, with Villamax, uh, it's so obvious to to explain and to ask. Um There's nothing much I want there's nothing much I want to say about Villamax. I, I like him. But his story, his his background development is very short, despite the fact that he did appear um, in the episode where Trakina uh, returned to Power Rangers, in the episode Heir to the Throne. So, um, and also, wh what I also did for his uh, his comeback f to Power Rangers for this reboot, I had to change his face. I didn't want to use his uh, usual Ginga Man uh, version of his face that was featured on the show so I created so I created a human a humanoid version of Villamax if imagining imagine if Villamax was a human underneath but unfortunately he's not a human he's a um you know who he is so um the actor behind this mask really dawns on me the face that I used for Villamax for my reboot, you know, if he was human, Michael Fassbender, the the guy from, you know, Michael Fa Michael Fassbender, the uh, the actor that we've seen in uh, such movies that we love so much, like X Men First Class, and sorry for sorry for uh, sorry about that. It's just uh, my dad just couldn't stop distracting me, calling me for something. Knowing that, despite the fact that I've been out of high school, I've been out. Of, it's been a year since I've been out of high school. Graduated, got my diploma and shit. You know, I'm tired. I'm tired of getting cut cu cut off when I'm making videos like this, and and he, he's always calling me to do something. Well, I know it's just you know, I it's just, it's just my life now. Right now is very complicated. I just can't keep doing this anymore. I'm like 20 years old and I'm still doing this shit. Anyway. Michael Fassbender, the actor from X Men First Class, Prometheus, several other movies that I probably have and haven't seen him in, but I mainly seen him in X Men First Class and Prometheus, the two movies I just as for mentioned. Well, take a take a good long look. Just imagine if if he was ever human, underneath. And had a human face, but I think if he wasn't, he would have an, a face of an alien under that head. And I don't know what to explain about it. Um, all we know is uh, Velmax is a noble warrior. I put the head plate back on. Um, he's a noble warrior, a swords master. He taught um, Trakina everything he knew about Mar. He, he would know the letter know about Mar how to be, how to be a complete warrior and swordmaster 
and learn martial arts and stuff in the in the ways of um whatever you know and um we know that the three metal and onyx um you know his story i i just can't explain it because his story is very short his his development is very short but even though he's one of one of my favorite villains from the series too and um to explain it it's so hard I mean I know so little about Velomax and Kegler I know that they're their partners since Velomax fights Kegler doesn't um I'm just exhausted today I'm just exhausted today it's just uh, I've been work. I, I, it's just I, it's just been, it's been a long holiday since you know since it's been Thanksgiving, and I'm stretched. Out. I've already been stressed stressed out after doing my last Power Rangers Lost Galaxy fan film that never been made, and I think when I think doing the the Lost Galaxy reboot movie is gonna be even more of a bigger pain once when I start in June of next year, and it's just it's just gonna it's just gonna be painful, and. It's just, it's just going to be so painful. Uh, once when I start. And, uh. And I know the most devastating. Well, I just, I don't want to, you know, there's nothing much to talk about but for both Villamax and Kegler. Uh. We know his death in the uh, series in the, uh, in the finale, Journey's End, was kind of rough on the edge when, uh, you know, when Trakina, uh turned heel against Villamax because Villamax, you know, he was, you know, in the finale in the second part of Journey's End when the rain while the Rangers were fighting the the um the bomb armed Stingwingers that she sent which were which was a massive army and all. Villamax's heart was you know, despite some some evil that was inside him, Villamax's heart was captured by the little girl that uh, you know, and the girl gives him a flower. Some blue uh, violet flower or something, and <clears throat> you know that story. And by the time when Trakina, you know, uh, um, uh, commanded Villamax the first time to uh, bl uh, use the sting, uh, the sh the Scorpion Stinger to blast the shuttle uh, through the sky, shooting every shuttle one by one. He didn't really do it. He he was going to, but he realized that despite the fact that the little girl captured his heart and melted his heart, um, it uh made him feel so neutral inside and started upbringing his good side. But even though Trakina doesn't like the the whole Villamax being a good thing, I don't know why she. Um, well, it's just. Well, when she was under DVS control, for those who know that, he, uh, he disobeyed her order, so that's why she beat the shit out of him. The more times she beat the crap out of Villamax, well, I don't know how to put, I don't know where to put this, and, um. Anyway, she just used her sword that she um, gave him and killed them by, you know, s saber slashing him, sword slashing him in the, in the stomach and in the chest. And then Villamax is dead. So that was the end of him for the series. He was such a good villain, but they couldn't just turn him good or anything. But, you know, even though despite that Lost Galaxy had a lot of death um, scenes for the villains more rather than the two rangers that got killed off in the series it's the villains it well it was the first uh we know that lost galaxy was the first power ranger show to have um death scenes but it was mainly for the villains because most of the villains in lost galaxy are extremely evil they were the reason why is because they're so they're so evil 
that none of them turned good at the end of the series. They just got killed, every single one of them, from Furio all the way to, you know, Trakina. And that's why uh, some people thought that the villains in Lost Galaxy were crap. Because, what or they were just tedious because, you know, even though they have have some good um, evil development, evil villain, uh, evil character development, but it sucks to see them get killed off filler episode by filler episode or recent story arc episode. It just, it just sucks, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I, I love this series, but I just didn't like the way how each of the villains get killed off. They, some of the villains shouldn't have turned good or turned to the dust like in Countdown to Destruction of In Space and you know, that, that was just, that would have been my theory, but most of, we know most of the villains, we know most of the villains in Power Rangers have to stay evil. Like, every villain in every superhero universe, from comic book to whatever, they have to stay evil. If the villain doesn't turn good or doesn't find a good side, then you know what? The, the superhero has to kill them all in the series or movie or show game or what video game or whatever is over. So, that's what they, that's what the hero has to do to get rid of the villain. Until next movie, next show, next video game, next whatever. You know, I don't have anything to talk about Kegler. I just this is all I just had to show. I just wanted to show Villa Max because I'm I don't have nothing to say about him. But I bet once um I tune in next month when I uh, show off Furio, if I can find my Furio uh, puppet because I've had him since when um when I wasn't doing uh the Rise of Trakina anymore last summer. So um. Thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see I'll see you next month when I show off Furio if I can find if I can find him, and then January January I'll probably start off doing the Power Rangers and go back with the villains because lately I have been showing off the villains for the last two months because it's almost December it's almost December almost so this is my best pet my my best pairing right here and I know it's everybody else's too. The, the um, Trakina Villamax uh, Deviat Kegler combination, then the Trakina Scorpius Furio slash Treacheron combination. So, um, until I find Furio, I'm going to continue on doing more uh, Morphin Gray case studies on any of the villains from the series. So, uh, thanks for watching. Stay, as, I, as I said, stay tuned until I find uh, Furio and do a, case, a, a little small case study on him. And then, probably sometime in January, I'll probably do Treach Treacheron. And, um, yeah, so thanks.